Welcome to Herself, a space for women to have deep conversations about the intersection between spiritual entrepreneurship and fulfilling your potential, so you can become the woman you truly are in every area of your life. After being in business for over two decades, I've learned, as you likely have too, that as you grow your business, your business grows you in unexpected, often challenging, yet miraculous ways. Here, we'll talk about how to get out of your own way so you can grow a business that's abundant and sustainable while allowing you to be a force for good in the world. I'll give you simple, actionable strategies as well as wisdom and inspiration to help you root into your wholeness, lead from your values, and work in ways that feel deeply aligned so you can bring your true self into the world through your business and in every area of your life. At the physiological level, it's often said that high blood pressure is a silent killer amongst women because most people who have it don't have any symptoms and that silence can be deadly. I would say that in entrepreneurship, especially for women, at the mental emotional level, imposter syndrome can also lurk silently below the surface, stopping our growth in its tracks or even worse, preventing our big dreams from being born in the first place. Today, we're going to take a look at imposter syndrome in a new light through the lens of the model that I work with in internal family systems or IFS. So you can start letting your courage and your desires take up more airtime inside you than your fears and your doubts. To lead us into this conversation about imposter syndrome, I want to take you back in time with me about 20 years ago, I was in my late mid to late 20s. And I was living in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And during that time, I was dating a man who was 16 years older than me. So he was in his early 40s. And with that age difference, he was also much more established in his career than me, I was just starting out. And he was very seasoned, he was very well known, teaching and traveling around the world. With that, he had a certain level of financial stability. I, at the time, I was teaching a lot of yoga in town. I was doing quite well. I was one of the most popular teachers there. So my classes were full. And with that, I started teaching workshops and then women's retreats. And he and I co-taught some of these things as well in town. And I also accompanied him as he traveled and taught around Asia and also in Europe and even in the U.S., And I think that he had the desire, actually, I'm pretty sure that he had the desire for me to be on more solid ground financially. And again, I was doing fine, but I was, I was not at the level that he was at. So he was wanting me to not just be teaching these one-off classes, these one-off workshops, but to have more substantial income and savings so that we could be on more equal ground or at least closer to it than we were. And so he suggested that we create and co-teach a 200-hour Yoga Alliance teacher training in Thailand. And I would say we'd had other reasons for wanting to do that. And when he presented that idea, it was just such a big concept beyond the level that I was thinking at, that the thought of doing it felt both really scary and overwhelming and also exciting. But inside, I felt a big yes. And I said yes. And he was right with that idea. It was a huge success. We filled the first one. It was a lot of fun for all of us, the the students there, for us leading it. And it brought in more money than I'd ever made before in my life. And it brought it all in at once. And in Thailand, that money can go a long way. So it was a huge success. And it also really brought my career to a new level. And it helped me to really tap into more of my leadership capacity, especially with a larger group moving through a transformative experience over an extended period of time. But that process wasn't without its stress, which I won't go into in great detail about here today. Uh, it, It was a lot to do. We did 30 days in a row and just being on 30 days in a row, I realized after we led it two times that that's not my preferred way of delivering a program. I need to have more rhythms of activity and rest. But aside from that piece, I want to talk more about the topic on hand today, which is imposter syndrome. 
As a co-leader of the training with my partner, I was also one of the youngest people there, even amongst the student body. So even though I had a really deep practice, I had been trained in yoga and meditation very well. I really knew my material, both cognitively and in a embodied way. It was still intimidating to have some of my students be twice or more my age. And I sometimes felt like I needed to prove myself so I could be respected, so I could be taken seriously, so I could be looked up to and liked as much as my partner was. And I often dreamed of the day when I would be older and more established and trusted and respected. And looking back, I do have a lot of respect for that young woman in her late 20s. I respect her courage. I respect the wisdom that she most definitely had, the dedication that she had to both her practice and her teaching, and the ways that she struggled. And all these years later, I continue to work with many women who struggle with imposter syndrome in their own ways. So first, let's define imposter syndrome. What is this? It's the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. Now, I have met women who have graduate degrees, who have taken the most esteemed courses and certification and coaching programs, who have many years of experience under their belts, and they still feel like their success isn't deserved. They feel that they're a fraud, that they don't deserve success, that they aren't capable of it. They believe that they need to be perfect and have everything sorted and figured out before they can step into what they really want to do. So it's important for us to pause and ask what's going on here? Because I would say this likely happens with men, but not to the degree with which it happens to women. And I feel saddened when I hear women share these hidden inner beliefs. And I also understand. And a powerful framework that I used to heal my inner voices of self-sabotage, inner criticism, and self-doubt is internal family systems or IFS. And it helped me so much, in fact, that I went on to become certified in this evidence-based psychotherapeutic model. So through the lens of internal family systems, we'd say that we are all made up of a multitude of inner parts rather than being one mono self. So in the case of imposter syndrome, we have parts that are telling us we're not worthy of success or we need to do more or be more before we can do what we want to do and experience success. Now, IFS also tells us that at their root, all of these parts are inherently good even if they're saying negative things to us, having us do things that are against what we ultimately want to do, and therefore having a negative impact on us. So how does this work specifically? The thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors around imposter syndrome are held by a cluster of parts, which we could also say are members of your inner family. And these parts are various forms of your inner critics and the younger, more insecure, more vulnerable parts of you that they are protecting. Now, we don't just have one inner critic. We usually have many. And some examples are your perfectionist, your inner controller, your taskmaster. And they're telling you that no matter how much education you have or work you do, It's still not enough that you're still not enough. And they think that you need to work harder to be taken seriously and that you don't deserve success. So first, when we apply the IFS framework to this, we zoom out. And when we do that, we see that the big picture view is that these messages are not coming from the essence of you. They're coming from parts of you. And these parts have eclipsed your essence. They've taken center stage, meaning they've taken over your midline. You think that they are you, 
You think that their thoughts and beliefs are your thoughts because they have fully grabbed the mic and taken over. And IFS, we call this, we get blended. You're blended with these critical parts. Now let's talk more about your essence because then your essence gets hidden behind these parts. And I know that you have really rested in and as your essence before. You wouldn't be here listening to a podcast about spiritual entrepreneurship if that weren't the case. And maybe you have really felt your essence when you've been on retreat. Or you felt relaxed and in a beautiful place in nature. Or maybe you're in the midst of doing work that really lights you up and you feel like, yes, this is what I'm here to do. This is what makes me come alive. You feel competent, you feel enlivened, you feel present. And those critical voices inside of you, they have then moved to the periphery. They've maybe moved to the background and this essence of you is at the foreground. And then there are times when you're experiencing the exact opposite, where your essence feels so distant that you, again, are completely blended with those critical parts and you think that you are them. And your essence is in the background, the critical parts are at the foreground, and this could be maybe you're not getting the results that you want, maybe you're feeling frustrated, maybe you have a challenging experience with a client, you've gotten a negative review. And first, I want to validate that experiencing both of these things and everything in between is normal, completely normal, especially in entrepreneurship, where we're taking risks, we're regularly going outside our comfort zones. Of course, we're going to be feeling this full range. So remember the phrase that we're spiritual beings having a human experience, and sometimes we're more connected with our divinity. Other times we're more connected with our humanity and again, add to that the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. And it's no wonder that critical parts of you are taking up more space inside. Entrepreneurship is scary. Absolutely. It's edgy. It's vulnerable to put your work out there, to be visible, to market yourself and your work, to ask people to invest in you and your services, to get rejections. And to keep showing up despite these feelings, not to mention any external criticism, conflict, or backlash that happens, which will happen. This is a lot. This is a lot. And we can also see that if these critical inner voices win out enough of the time, they are going to stop you in your tracks. And you're not going to get to move past the challenges to experience some wins. They're going to keep you from raising your prices so you can start earning more money without burning yourself out. They're going to keep you from posting on social media and building the connections you need to have a community around your work. They're going to stop you from launching that program or that podcast or writing that book that you feel so excited about or from sticking with something long enough through the inevitable peaks and valleys for you to actually gain traction because gaining traction takes time and consistency and perseverance, staying with it through this all. So if this is true, then also, isn't it true that the outer success that you desire really isn't possible without some level of self-mastery, which we could say is an inner success. We need to have self-governance so that we can be aware of when these critical voices are taking over us, are pulling us back, are stopping us. And we don't want to then have another part of us override that and start to go to war with it, with, with those critical parts but we want to come from our essence, from our true self to have that inner self-leadership. So inner success is not having those inner naysayers stand in your way, especially for an extended period of time. Inner success is not having them stand in your way, but also actually befriending and transforming them so they can become powerful allies 
as you take creative risks. So you can see the difference there. We're not trying to override them, get rid of them, but this is about alchemy, transforming them from critics to allies so that they can actually propel you to move forward because energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed. So how do we transform this powerful energy that has been holding you back? Because let's be honest, until that happens, you are experiencing some form of inner civil war. Some parts of you are actively blocking your success by being critical of you, by holding you back, while other parts of you are actively seeking it by taking an online program, by building a website, by listening to this podcast. And the IFS model that I've used to heal these parts of myself and that I share with the women that I mentor so they can do the same has a very elegant roadmap to help transform the harsh voices in your head that are holding you back so they can get on board with supporting you in becoming the woman you are destined to be in business and in life. And once we start doing this inner excavation, we also see that these critical voices are linked to not only your personal wounds that you have faced directly in your life, but they also come from cultural wounds of the patriarchy and ancestral wounds from our legacy about how culture and patriarchy over time has really impacted the self-esteem, the self-worth, the inner dialogue of women in our families and that has been passed on to us through our DNA. And truly, it does not have to be this way. You don't need to let another month or another year go by without giving yourself the gift of healing your imposter syndrome or the other critical inner voices inside for good. You can step out of the headwind that's keeping you from stepping into your full potential. Absolutely. And we're always going to have, we're always going to have equal doses or somewhat equal doses of support and challenge as we step into our full potential. But we can start to see that the challenges that come our way are part of the process to us fulfilling our potential. There are things we need to learn, to grow, to evolve, to come into that next phase of ourselves, of our lives, of our work, rather than just obstacles keeping us stuck. You don't need to live with an unnecessary headwind. You deserve, you deserve to feel that open road of stepping into your full potential. So remember, above all, these voices of imposter syndrome and inner criticism are trying in an outdated way to protect you. And they hold limiting beliefs and identities that are not your true identity. And you're a grown woman now, and you don't need that kind of protection anymore. You have gifts and talents to share. So we want to update these protective parts of you so they can step aside and help you to soar, or at the very least, to help you take that next right step. One step at a time. Because that's how we build our dreams. It's a stair-step approach, baby step by baby step. I'm not about really fast wins or going after that popular shiny object to have a big win. I'm about long-term, sustainable, stable, aligned success. And that doesn't mean you're not going to have big wins, but it means we're going to come at that from a very grounded place. And we're going to do our due diligence with our inner work and our outer work. But today we're specifically talking about the inner work What needs to happen inside of you so you can have this level of self-governance, of self-mastery to step into who you're really here to be, what you're really here to do. I know the path is not easy, but trust me, the rewards far outweigh the challenges. So if you're listening to this, there's a reason for that. Trust that. Not everyone is listening to this right now. If you're listening to this, there is some aspect of your essence, of your soul that knows that it's time to clean house a bit more, to really up-level your self-leadership, your self-mastery, 
because it's time. Life is short and success is possible for you as long as you keep it, keep taking those steady, sometimes messy actions forward towards your dreams because your dreams and you really do matter and you do really have what it takes. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, change doesn't come from listening alone. I invite you to commit to taking one small or large courageous action after today's conversation. One step you can take if you haven't already is to sign up for my Sunday journal. It's a weekly newsletter filled with inspiration and reflections about the intersection between spiritual entrepreneurship and fulfilling your potential to help you become the woman you truly are in every area of your life. You can subscribe at programs saraavonstovercom forward slash journal. And if you found this podcast valuable, please share it with the women in your world. Also, I'd be very grateful if you'd leave a review. It helps others find resources like this. And I'd love to hear what's coming alive for you after listening today. Above all, keep going and never forget the unique offerings you and your true self bring to the world. Until next time, I'm sending you my heartfelt support.